There was a time right after high school where I was working a warehouse shop. During that time, I was strongly motivated to go to college at the same time and get a degree. Because I didn't really like my job. I wouldn't say I hated it, but if I quit, then I'll probably just get another minimum wage job. I didn't have anything to put myself in a better situation. What was the point of quitting this job when literally I have nothing else to go to? You know, I had a skill set of software engineering and programming in general, but I didn't have something to show that. It's like people who do art and they're really good at it, but they get frustrated that nobody's buying commission or anything like that, especially when they have no portfolio. They don't share art on their Instagram. They don't share it on Twitter or anything. Half of their Twitter is them arguing with somebody or uh, about gossip or drama. And it's like, ain't nobody trying to buy art from you, bro. Ain't nobody trying to buy anything from you. I'm sure some of you know the exact people who I'm talking about. They're like, check my Twitter for my art. And then you check and three quarters of their Twitter feed is them doing Twitter activities aka crying about stuff and being toxic they're not treating it like an actual portfolio it's like who wants to do work with you when you're showing you're emotionally unstable on twitter and people don't think about that so with me my experience with programming i was on the same boat where i can't just be like yo hire me because i'm good at coding but here's nothing to prove that but give me a chance with an interview anyway and I knew that was unrealistic. So when I was working at that warehouse job, a warehouse job, I was saying to myself, yo, I don't know how to prove this, but you know what I should do? Because it's kind of like a two for one here. I need to go to college to prove that I can use my skill set or I'm at least capable of it. And then I went again. I switched my major and I was taking programming classes. I really didn't like it. I had more fun creating my own projects in my own timing. And that's what I started to do instead. I dropped out once more, but this time I was just doing my own projects. And over the years, I spent countless hours building projects that have helped me sustain financially. So I was thinking recently, you know, with everything I've built during my free time for the past years now, I can easily put together a credible resume to apply for work in the IT field. Today, I could maybe I could do that now. I could find something to do. You know, I spoke to several people who I am already familiar with who are in the industry and they told me that my background is well qualified. I wouldn't need a degree at this point, even though it could help, but you shown that you have an active skill set. But the problem with a degree or a higher education is that and I'm sure some of you have parents that are strictly enforcing getting a degree and, and don't get it twisted is that bad to get one is it bad to get a degree or invest your time into I wouldn't say so but I think what the problem is that people believe that having a college degree is essentially a ticket to an automatic success and I'll tell you exactly where this first started you going to school in general you have to understand and really think about this elementary school middle school high school it teaches you the essentials to being an employee like consistently showing up on a schedule learning how to deal with other people the social aspect of it but at the same time there is a minimum requirement to simply fall in line as I'm saying that, I haven't said once, though, that school or middle school, high school, elementary school, I never said that it teaches you a skill set or the skill sets you need to be a functional adult. It may teach you some, but not the ones that a lot of young adults suffer through. When you graduate high school, you lose that schedule. That the thing that school teaches you the most to be consistent with the schedule, right? So you lose it once you graduate and you are so accustomed to a schedule that the first thing you think is appropriate to your subconscious is to go straight to college, even though you don't have the skill set or the realization of what you truly should be doing with your life. Some of you just go to college after high school and have no plan. No plan at all. Listen, I fell for that. 
look, it may sound negative, but it's not completely. Because you can argue a point and you can say to me, well, Aku, that's what makes the education system good. Because it's designed to mold people into effective, compliant members of society or workplace. That is 100% correct. I believe it does. However, it does not disqualify the absence of critical skills you may miss on your own. It doesn't disqualify one's lack of ability to set their own path or individually create their own social identity. For anyone here who has graduated high school, tell me I'm lying when I say you graduated and there was a moment where you're like, okay, what am I going to become now in society? You may have not said that directly in that phrase in your head, but you were thinking about what's what what am I going to be like now? You know what I'm saying? What, who am I? It feels like when you graduate high school, you have so much freedom now that it's kind of scary. You now have to build an identity for yourself in society to build an identity. What do you need? You need independence, creativity and even critical thinking. Other, otherwise, you will become what people call an NPC. And calling someone an NPC tends to have a negative stigma to it. Uh, to run a society, I guess you need NPCs. They are essential, in a sense, or whatever you may say. If you want to look at yourself as somebody who's not an NPC, whatever. You get where I'm going with this. Is it bad, though, you know, on that point? Is it bad you want to follow the institutional rules of life? I don't think that's bad. What's wrong with going to college and getting a degree and working a job? It's not like you're throwing your whole life away unless you make it that way. Are you really living life or is life living it for you? So when you think about that degree and graduation and thinking this is what I need as a golden ticket to success, it's a scary risk. It sounds like security getting a degree, right? It sounds like something reassuring, but it's still a risk because you don't know yet whether college is actually a fulfillment you need to accomplish things you presumed would be given to you like a career. You don't know the career you spent countless hours getting a degree for is truly worth your time. You're going to sit there thinking about that for the rest of your life. Imagine getting a, you get a degree and you get a job that you don't like after that. It's like, man, I literally went through how many years of college just to be unhappy with what this work is like? But you got to stick to it, right? <laughs> Can't just like all those years, you know, especially if you paid for college. Someone's going to pay for that tuition eventually. By the time you finish your degree, unless you already... Uh, Unless you already are in this case, you're you become a grown adult. People got to pay rent or other finances. You got so much to deal with. And the best way people to the best way many people deal with it, these complications in life of being a grown adult is that they suppress it and they just let it go by, which ends up becoming that NPC where you just repeat the same routine, the same actions every single day without any personal motivation or fulfillment. Is this how you want to live life? Perhaps not. But the lesson here is that not everyone goes down the same path. Not everyone has the same journey. There's more to life than just a typical schedule. You may hate your job or you might be content with it, but you should never settle for something you feel like you can be greater at. Settling with conformity is a sense of following societal standards without even bothering to question them. Now, I wouldn't be over the top with it. Like, you got to really be so antisocial and sabotage yourself and be like, yo, I got to question every single thing in society and like, I hate society. You know what I'm saying? Like, listen, I'm a hypocrite about that because I'm the one with the face tattoos and people are either scared of me in public or I don't become approachable to people or some people think that I'm gonna do something malicious like there there needs to be a balance i'm 
clearly lost uh, in my own balance at times. But, you know, that's just part of life, though. You sometimes lose your balance. You get too skeptical of things or you get too comfortable with things. Both options will stress you out intensely. That's the thing about societal standards and what we are consuming every day. It's not just school. There's things we see on social media as well. People put a lot of faith into popular trends and what everyone is upvoting or whatever. And they fall in line with the opinions to behave just like the majority. It's unfortunate that it's unfortunate when that happens to people because people are treating are essentially thinking that they have to make certain exceptions to society of other people in life rather than having opinion for themselves. As a result, they will end up stuck in societal roles that they do not find fulfillment in. We sort of end up autopiloting. Now, this is the worst stage of them all, in my opinion. When you are an autopilot, that's like the ultimate self-defeat where most of what you do during the day or night is not even a conscious effort anymore. It's just habitual and un and something that never challenges you. It's never challenging. You wake up every day, you do the same thing over and over again. The only thing people do differently on autopilot is react to the environment differently. But it doesn't change or challenge their ingrained routine. Because life can be so fast-paced and demanding due to work, family, friends, relationships, you never really have time to think or a moment of reflection. You're essentially detached or disassociated at this point. Usually medication would do that for you, but people can be this way in the most broken state of mind. Going back to how I started this episode, I had a similar feeling when I was going to school and work at the same time. I felt like I never had time to myself. I felt like I wasn't even active in my own life anymore. It made me extremely difficult. It, it, it made it extremely difficult for me to grow as a person. When I started dating around a little bit, I couldn't even be attentive towards the relationship because or relationships because I screwed up a lot of them. I was so busy with life that I couldn't be the best or nicest person to someone else. I already had a lot on my plate, so a relationship wasn't going to help, yet I felt lonely and eager at the same time, so this created more conflict. I feel like this can help contribute to depression, because if you are constantly on autopilot, you never manage to get your desires and aspirations filled, which you can make yourself feel like, I don't know, make life feel empty or feeling like a huge lack of purpose is uh, sort of pushing you through life. There's like, there's just no purpose. I don't know. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't know. I feel like anyone can break free, free of the autopilot curse, but it requires a conscious effort. It's easy to just say, find something new to do, but there's a certain level of self-defeat in autopilot mode where breaking of where breaking those old habits of being an autopilot is extremely difficult to do. Once you're already on autopilot, it's like you can't really get out of it. And when we talk about school, work, or anything else that keeps us busy, I think a great way to help this topic overall, since there are several for this episode of Aqua Anime, I think making intentions of your plans can truly help everything. This is even if you're going through autopilot mode, start the day and make a promise to yourself for something to be different today or with work or school, make a plan to what you want to do. If this is truly all for you, if everything that you're currently doing right now is working towards your ambitions, do you even have ambitions? Do you even have a plan? Maybe you should Think about one so you don't end up being an autopilot, so you don't end up stuck in this loop or how they say become a NPC. The answer won't come immediately, obviously, but sooner or later you will discover it. It took me a while to figure it out myself completely. I'm still learning. 
I wasted several semesters in college to finally figure out I prefer running things in my little projects on my own. Surely I'll figure out what else I'll do differently in the future. For those who have known me for years, you know how much I've changed and how much I've experimented. It's always good to at least try something new. Anyway, this episode can be found on Spotify and on YouTube. Watch the sun bleed. It's our time to go out while we watch the sun down. Never mind, we try to shine our own way, but the stars are not aligned. Laser on the heat, best bet you better hide. Said to do what's best, now my thoughts are on the climb. Take a trip with me, we can share confessions. What's next for us? That's a loaded question. You go first, you have the best expressions. I'm looking up now, I see a dark sky heaven. Watch the sun bleed, it's our time to go out. While we watch the sun down, silent guy forever peace. Now there's no doubt. While we watch the sun down, fears or hopes are gone. We don't know what that's